We all know that like charges repel each other and unlike charges attract each other to make the atom neutral or to make anything balanced. This is the basic law of nature. This concept is applied here. On the atomic scale, let's take a look at copper atom. Here is the model. Proton has the positive charge and the electron has the negative charge, which creates the force of attraction in between them. Copper has an atomic number 29. That is, it contains 29 electrons and 28 protons. Seems like it is unbalanced due to one extra electron which is called valence electron. Since an electron in the outermost orbit is subjected to the least attractive force from the nucleus, so when some voltage is applied to a copper conductor, this extra valence loosely bonded electron starts to move from one atom to another atom. This is what we call current flow. That is why copper is a good conductor of electricity. Let's take another case of nitrogen atom. Nitrogen has atomic number 7, that is, it has 7 protons and 7 electrons. It does not have any free electrons to move as all electrons are tightly bonded to nucleus by electrostatic force. So it does not allow movement of electron from one atom to another. But any atom has its limit to hold the electrons within atom. When some external force or electric field is applied to nitrogen, outer shell electrons experience a pulling force and acquire kinetic energy. If we increase electric field further, kinetic energy increase more. At one point, when the internal electrostatic force becomes less than the external electric field, breakdown occurs. Atoms start to lose the electrons and becomes ions. This process is known as ionization. This ions accelerated again and collide another atoms and generate more ions. This avalanche-like effect generates an intense amount of heat and ions attracted towards electric field causes current to flow or produce arc in gas. So, the maximum electric field the material can withstand under ideal conditions without breaking down, that is without failure of its insulating properties, is known as the dielectric strength of a material. Material having high dielectric strength are used to make insulators. The higher the dielectric strength of a material, the better an electrical insulator it makes. Dielectric strength of air is 30,000 volt per centimeter. It means it needs minimum 30,000 volt per centimeter to break down and starts conducting. When the charge created by clouds in the thunderstorm exceeds dielectric strength of the air, breakdown of air occurs and we see lightning strike. So this is all about dielectric strength. I created this video to easily understand my upcoming video about how lightning damages our electronics. I hope you liked this video and learned something. As always, thanks for watching, comment down topics of your interest in engineering, subscribe to get notified when I upload next video.